So I was working at this hostel on the big island in Hawaii, Hilo, Hawaii, and it was the Wild Ginger Inn. I'll never forget it. It was right in town, and I was there for like a month. It was a blast. We would, but we were literally like scrubbing toilets, and like it was gross some of them, sometimes. But you know, they give you free tips sometimes, some free beers or papayas or something. But a beautiful place. They gave us free breakfast, like coffee and whatever, and fruit, and uh, and then we'd have lunch if we worked there that day. We worked there most days. We'd like clean the hostel and then we'd go out to the beach and go explore or whatever. And I had a lot of fun. But then I was I was initially going to Hawaii to work on a farm, but the first farm I was going to when I was in LA said hey, we, we have a family emergency. We can't you know, host you at this time. Oh my God, I'm going to Hawaii tomorrow. So I said, I'm going anyways. So I went and I didn't have a return flight back. And instead of working on farms, I found this hostel and I was flowing. Hawaii is amazing. So I stayed at a couple of spots uh, with like friends, you know, and then I started working at this hostel. And then eventually I said, okay, I gotta go work on the farm. I wanna go experienced farms in Hawaii. I was hearing about these cool stories of people working on farms. So I just left. I went to the other coast. I said, I heard about this like coffee picking opportunity. So, okay, I'm going to check that out. The guy who owns the coffee farm, we like show up. It was this like little like Craigslist ad, like, hey, we need harvesters. He's from Palm Beach Gardens. He's like, yeah, I knew MacArthur and all those people. Like I grew up going to the like beach, like the state park, like right with my bike. He's like, you're hired. I was like, okay, amazing. So I'm like, okay, I don't have anywhere to stay. So I literally, it was starting to get dark, just found a little like orchard and then I fell asleep there and the dogs I could tell were like sniffing like, and I was like, oh man, dude, get out of here. <laughs> and then I woke up early for this job. I barely slept, you know, but it was worth it because I went to this coffee picking job and it opened up this beautiful experience I had. Anyways, they monitor you for a sec to see if like you can keep up with the Hawaiians and they were like, all right, he's good. He threw me on the other team and I was picking with like the Hawaiians. They're like, it's the kind man, look, there's a chameleon like putting it at like, just like having fun, you know, and picking coffee beans, you know, laborers. It was, it was, it, it was wild. But so I, uh, took, I, I wasn't getting paid, right, for another week or so. It was like this real payroll job for a little month stretch. So I go into town, this guy pulls up right away. Like, I swear, I like walk up into town and he goes, hey brother, what are you doing? Like, just super direct, like, what are you doing? What's up? I saw you yesterday, how you doing? I was like, I'm, I'm chilling, dude, what's up? He's like, bro, like, what are you up to? Like, no one really comes up to this part of the mountain. Like, what's good? I'm like, I'm chilling, man. I've started this coffee farm. I'm, I'm trying to farm. He's like, you farm? He's like, what? Dude, I need help on my farm. Like, it didn't, like, he was like, dude, I farm too. Like, we hit it off, you know? And then he was like, hey, I have help. I need some help on this farm. Like, you just have burn piles and stuff. Like, you know what you're doing, it seems. Like, I was like an experienced whooper at this point. Like, uh, you know, I've done, I was at like, you know, 10 different farms before this weed whacking. I finally figured out the basics, you know, to keep up. <laughs> but it's funny, they don't even call it woofing there. It's like, they're like, it's probably, they don't even say it anymore there because it's like, you know, like we're just flowing. And I was, I was flowing because literally Mike scooped me up that day. He was like, bro, hop in the truck, come with me, see what's good. You like, I'll put you up tonight and you'll, you could like see what's up. like. No strings attached, all good. So we hang out, we like go get a bite to eat. He's comfortable with me, cause he was like, yo, I don't, like he wanted to be comfortable with me, he's from the island. So anyways, we, we end up hitting it off. He's like, bro, let's go to the spot. He starts following the road to where the coffee farm is. We pass the coffee farm, it's like beautiful. You know, it's like following this mountain, just tiered coffee fields and avocados this big. Like, it was crazy, it was crazy. So he just pulls up at this cemetery and I was like, what's up? Where, where are we? He was like, come on. And then he, we go down the cemetery, like to the bottom. He goes through some like thick grasses. It's this beautiful farmstead. Beautiful bananas on both sides. No irrigation, you know, he had a little thing. He would run it when he started the ginger. Like 
I just saw the, like, these models, you know? He didn't really have to say much. He was just like, here you go. <laughs> you know? And anyways, he had Rosa Ginger, and he was selling turmeric. He was selling it all to uh, these ladies in town locally who, like, juiced it and stuff. And he had the shampoo ginger next to his outdoor kitchen, like, the whole night. Like, sick. And I was helping him clean it up. He was stoked. Um, but again, not, not for any money. It was just to get the experience right and just learning. And I swear if I went back there, he would be like, what's good, you know? And this was probably five, six, you know, seven years ago. It's crazy. And uh, anyways, I, he's like, you could stay here. Uh, you could stay here for however long you work at the coffee spot. Like, it's all good. I might have a show here one night, but that's all you. I'm going to stay at my mom's up the way. Like, I'm helping her out. I'm like, I just need someone. You can stay in this like little like A-frame with a little kitchenette. It's like, OK, cool. This is like, you know, penthouse sweet to me at 20 years old. It's like nothing to my name. It was like awesome, you know, and I was just grateful. Like he, he put me up. It's right super close to the coffee spot and he was going to teach me his ways. And he put me up for like, you know, a few weeks there. But I would wake up and go down this like little ladder and it was just beautiful, like co like you're looking out into the Pacific Ocean and there's like a little like the tourists coming in on the yacht, you know, every day. But you were like up, you felt like you were at like the top of the mountain. So anyways, I'm going backpacking this weekend, so I feel just super inspired from those experiences up in the mountains. I'm from Florida, but I didn't, I didn't grow up growing vegetables, right? Like, I wasn't, they didn't teach it to us in schools. I was never taught that. And so it was my first experience with, like, tropical, you know, banana, like, growing. So, like, all my other woofing experiences were, like, Germany or Nashville, Tennessee or Oregon and it's cold. It's cold, it's different. You're chopping wood and you're getting all sorts of other experience. But this was like you're chopping dropping. <laughs> no, you're like you're 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 dealing with quick growing stuff. It's really cool. I liked it like passion fruits just dropping just like all over the place. I'm like, how can I eat 80 passion fruits? Dude, you gotta come down here and eat these, Mike. So it's, it's real, like, especially in the tropical, we're more subtropical. This is like, they could do breadfruit and like all the crazy mango steens and cool stuff. But here in summertime, it does the same kind of growth. So it's fun. Create the farm, create, like, I guess I'm trying to, I guess create that farm that I was at, right? It's like not that spot, like that was Mike's creation. But one day I can make Jack's, you know creation where I put it like he was an older guy you know he was putting in he like knew the mechanics it was so he did it for whatever 20 30 whatever years growing every season just a part of it and now it was like nothing to him he was a hands-off farm for real like no irrigation he would come see ginger once a month and be like let's water dude wa just make sure they sprout let's get out of here you didn't have to freaking fertilize because the soil is so amazing it was like this perfect area where they've been growing forever. Like it's brand new earth that's been formed, you know? But he just mixes in like fish guts and stuff every season, yeah. That's the same thing you can do in Florida. But uh, yeah, it went off and I hope, yeah, I want to emulate that for sure. <laughs>